Yeah. Just that American diner. So basically, yeah. Some big hitters on the line. Bahrain turned up, didn't they? With three hombres. With the wrong tyres. They turned up with the wrong tyres, but then I think they changed them the day before. I saw on Instagram. Everyone changed their tyres four times. Everyone was super stressed about changing their tyres. Uh, but more or less, done the course at the start. Which is what we reconned. And then I did notice one point early on about maybe 30, 36, 40k, 37, 38k. And everyone started fighting for position. And I was like, something must be going on. Because like Glenn was saying at the start, you know, pick a couple of people out that know what they're doing and kind of follow them. So I started seeing Lachlan and stuff move to the front and I was like fucking hang about something must be going on here. Then we hit quite a um, like a minimum maintenance road. Super light down. And that's where I burnt my back wheel, I think. Um, but yeah, kept it together. And then the next main point was Eskridge. <coughs> About 65k in, going towards um, is it Slide Road, that one, isn't it? Out of Eskridge, basically, there's a minimum maintenance road, which we recons. Which is proper bumpy. Which is super bumpy. You know, a lot of gaps between the wheels. Did you see where you're going? I was maybe coming into it top about 25th wheel then near the front just followed um, there was a bit of mud down near the bottom actually and the, the, the lead moto crashed um, there's a dude with his helmet running around like daft punk like looking around like crazy and then um, they just stayed near the front and then another section a bit of a throw stayed near the front and the guys were getting freaking yeah Guys are getting elastic out the back for sure. 100k in, a little pile up at the bottom of this climb. I positioned well, I was behind like Daniel Oss. Come in, some guy just had to unclip or something. I kind of hit him, which lost my wahoo. You know, couldn't go back for it. Then it was fast, rolling. Really felt my back wheel being super flat. Frustrating because my phone's not working, so I couldn't send Glenn a voice note saying, I need gas. And then again at the feed, like Glenn was saying how unorganised it was. Just people everywhere. How many how many support crews were there in this feed? The thing was it was on a it was in an area that was like a grid, so you had the main race route go through. Can I get you some coffee again? Oh yes please. Where are you guys from if you don't know why I'm asking? There wasn't a from, from England, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So really? what brings you all the way over here? No, that's weird. Um, doing bike rides over in Emporia. Oh, cool. Yeah, I wish you luck on that. <laughs> it was on the Saturday. It's called Unbound Gravel. Oh. Had like 5,000 people racing it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, that's so cool. We're lucky we didn't get this weather. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been terrible. <laughs> yep. Cool. Is your food good so far? Yeah, yeah. Okay. thank you. <laughs> There the fee zone was chaos, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on the it was on this grid. There were just people parked everywhere off the grid. So we did pretty well. I got there quite early and got a, a half decent space. But even so, yeah, it wasn't very clear for any of the riders where any of the support crews were. So you, Jesse basically had to roll through like everyone else, looking for where they were going to be. Because our data wasn't working on the phones, I couldn't really prep that. So, and then we had everything ready, so I had the gas ready. Uh, it almost <laughs> But initially when I saw you, I tried to pull over. Almost took some. I almost took, out a, guy, yeah. I almost took out a groovy gravel guy, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, it was, just, it was just chaos and stressful. And then we gassed it, and then I tried to ride off. So about the valve done up. Yeah, so then we had to do that 
Okay. How long have you been on that tyre like that? I feel like it was probably from the 40k mark on the first minimum maintenance well, section. Well, That's where I really hit it. Yeah. And we I think rear, maybe... When I put the pump on it, was 15 PSI. Yeah. So then we got that back up to 28, which is what you were running on the back. Uh, and that worked. I don't know if the pump worked. Had the camelback ready, bottles were ready, so you, all things considered we did a pretty good job. Yeah, we've done two 500s, <coughs> hydration vest, and I downed um, a bottle of water. Um, but yeah, I still, everyone was stopping at different places during this feed zone. The feed zone, probably about, from start to end, it's probably like, 400 meters long, wasn't it? Oh, maybe longer than that. So it was chaos, and then I jumped back on the road, um, trying to catch up. I was with a couple of guys pulling too strong, so I got tailed off. Then I got with this guy with a Benton um, Fox Fork. I think it was like top 25 in the end. He started pulling like crazy. And then we're going towards a section out of Alma where we'd had a lot of punches in the recon. But lucky with the rain the day before, it kind of turned it into mud and it had been driven on. So either the rocks were kind of washed to the side or they'd been like pushed down into the mud. I think all the guys with their hire cars probably picked up all of the sharp ones for it. <laughs> yeah, the guy in his um, Prius done a refund, he double punched it on his car there. But yeah, we were just chasing for quite a while. Super. Went past Grey Fanal and Marty punctured. Finally got back on, and just about two seconds after we got back on, everyone stopped for a piss. So we didn't probably have to go that hard to get back on. But that was, a, yeah, it was definitely. We, when we were catching back on, there was people getting dropped. It was like proper selection. And then going towards. Yeah, fast rolling section. And. I've been suffering. With, I suffer with cramp quite a lot in these races. So this week I've been preloading with tabs in like every training ride in the morning at night, and we put. I think I first suggested to go for three tabs in the 1.5 reservoir. But then it says to bang four in there. So when I got this hydration pack. I was literally just like guzzling this hydration pack to try and hold this cramp off. Similar to what I'd done in Tracker. Um, and luckily I held it off and it never came back. But then I was running super low on like consistent water um, to the next feed. And it felt like it took forever to get there. And then I was just riding in the bunch. Going towards Little Egypt, we had to cross a train track, which was the barrier was down. And they just waved us through anyway, um, which is interesting. Then going towards Little Egypt, there's a little climb before Little Egypt, and I got tailed off there before you drop down into like a gully, and then a super rocky climb. Found myself in a group of about three, um, with some motivated, they were quite motivated really. I think similar position to me, they hadn't gone completely full gas to like, explosion you know like I was like I'm not going to keep up with these guys and rather going like another 30 seconds to blow up I just started pacing myself you know so then we we kept the chain tight we caught a group of about five about a group of about five and then we were rolling pretty well so there's about maybe like eight of us in the end seven of us and um, caught some stragglers up and then at one point it split and then four of us went away and then we kept them rolling we started catching guys still who were tailed off because I think at the point of Little Egypt the front group is split into two groups of, two groups of about 18 or so so we were catching the stragglers that were getting tailed off because it was super hilly going towards uh, Council Grove and then Vakoch we, we caught Vakoch up he started smashing it and then we've done a river crossing, which is into a steep climb. 
uh, super loose and I got tailed off there and then I was riding with um, this canyon guy and the guy who's actually in the breakaway with like really big ears with like the knee-high socks with like Matilda um, and then we came up this hill there was a photographer at the top and I don't really know what happened but basically I was halfway up the wheel dude done something that I wasn't really expecting and I just fell over the wheel and just came down hit my shoulder and my head a little bit but mainly quite a big gash near my knee um, which actually went quite deep actually almost like picking out a bit of muscle almost or something and I couldn't even jump it was just at the crest of the climb almost I couldn't even jump back on the bike and ride up the climb so I had to walk up and then yeah it's like 20k to the feed solo so I probably lost about three to four minutes there um, and then when I came into the feed Glenn probably wasn't expecting me to rock, come in like a wounded warrior what do you first think when I rolled in and you saw my leg was all bloody um, you, yeah you kind of you look like you've been in the wars a little bit <laughs> you haven't seen me for how long like four and a half hours yeah like four and a half hours that was the biggest hardest section and we, we'd wrecked quite a bit of it, so we knew that it was going to be the longest, hardest bit. Like, start and the finish were kind of faster, nicer gravel. And like this, the middle section was the lumpy, hard bit that was probably a bit more like tracker. Mm -hmm. So we knew that was going to be the tough bit. And then, yeah, you came in looking like you'd been shot. <laughs> I was bleeding everywhere, man. But I know from all the other stuff that I've done that, like, you can't really... You don't want to get over excited about that because the rider just reacts to that as well. So you, I kind of just looked at it, took it in, and kind of ignored it and carried on doing what we were, what we planned to do anyway. Yeah. So I don't think we, I don't think I even asked you about it at the feed. We you, just, you can't really do anything, then, can you? No. Sorry, no. And if you needed something, you'd have said, you know, can I have some kind of wipe or. A, Disinfectant. I did wash it a bit with the bottle, didn't I? Yeah. Um, but I don't think I even, I don't think I even mentioned it. I just carried on doing what we were doing, and we did say that again. It was absolute chaos. I still got to show you the video. Chaos. There was, there was basically they were sending you out in five different directions, and there was one guy who was just shouting like coloured parking spots to people. So you, you're coming in at like 25 miles an hour. And this guy's like, green over there, red over there, yellow over there, orange over there. So all of the riders were just like, had no idea where they were going. And you're a bit fucking dazed when you come in in that state yeah. anyway. You don't really know what to expect. We'd actually wrecked it, so we knew what it looked like. You still don't know what you're going to find. So I'd basically ignored all of the stuff about where you're supposed to be and organise yourself. I basically just... I, got myself just on the other side of the time on that so there, I was could basically you, no, I? there was no way that we could fuck up like Jesse had gone through the timing map so you had you registered yourself and then the very next thing was me sitting on the grass <coughs> waiting to go so you, there was no confusion about where you were going to be because you could have been sent off in the wrong direction and not even found me mm. so I didn't want that to happen so there was people all the way off to the right yeah. as well so I wedged myself right in view. We did exactly what we planned. We had the bottles exactly as we planned, the gels, had the, the wire ready. Yeah. Although you, what happened when you loaded up my road? I, so I, I basically had it ready to go, turned it on, and I was like, I better, I better have it ready and on with the route on so that it's ready for Jesse. But I won't let the battery run down, so I turned it on 10 minutes before I expect him. So I turn it on 10 minutes before he comes through and it says 13% on it. I thought, fuck, who doesn't charge their wire? I don't think I charged that road it's in the tracker. So this was like last month. It still lasted another two hours or so, didn't it? Yeah, and by then I got onto the point where we we'd, done, really we'd done full recon yeah. and I was with the group as well. So so he did its job. Mm. Um, and that was all really scary. That's the bit I was worried about was doing the bit out of the feed to the point where we parked on the yeah, recon day. Yeah, we missed maybe 10k on the recon. Yeah. See that, so you had that for that, so that was important. 
and then you're basically flat out to the line. Yeah, so I actually um, I rolled out. It was chaos leaving the feed zone. There was people I guess driving to the finish who'd already done their support job. And there was cars everywhere. I went between these two massive um, trucks and I clipped one with my uh, shoulder on the wing mirror because yeah. it was like they're just fucking just in. They're just in the fucking way. It's yeah. like I'm trying to race here, bro. Um, went out up the climb. I started flagging hard down in the down in the uh, mix bottle um, with the tabs in. And uh, that's when I got caught again by this uh, canyon guy who um, I touched wheels with. Then we were rolling pretty steady. He asked me if I was okay, he apologised. I think maybe he saw the cameraman on top of the hill and unexpectedly got out of the saddle. Because I know what he's like because I was riding with him. Normally you just flick your elbows a little bit like you're going to get out of the saddle. Um, or if I knew that he was unexpected, I wouldn't have been that kind of like up on his wheel like that. Um, so that just caught me out. He apologised and I was like, yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> then we got caught by Ovet and a few other hitters. Um, and then basically just get the chain tight to the line. I was a bit anxious about the final, knowing we got the climbs at Ka Kahola Hill or something after the reservoir. And I was Res thinking, reservoir and then there was one serious climb and then a kind of quite a long drag, wasn't there? After mm. that. I was thinking a bit like... If I got to the bit where we'd reconned, I could maybe hold on. But I was anticipating getting dropped. But in the end, on the seat climb out of the reservoir, um, I think I'd done like 350 up there, 360. Um, but if anything, the person who I think we dropped a couple, I think we dropped one guy with big ears. But um, if anything, Ovet was struggling the most. He almost got dropped. Um, he said he was, his feet were really hurting. Over the top of that climb, we caught the guy at Nienhaus from Trek Balwaza. Caught him, caught a couple other guys. And, um, yeah, to the line, we probably averaged like 36. And then you come into town, and then this year, because of the chaos last year where they the 200s were kind of sprinting against the guys doing that, you know, the, not the race, the kind of 100 mile or the sportive. It was the last categorised climb into town <clears throat> and that's where they split the route and had barriers down the middle, so 200 went on the left. I ended up being on the front of that section and then I was like, well, I'm on the front. This is a bit annoying. And then instead of like going easy, I thought, well, I might as well you know, push it a little bit, so at least if I do need to react, I've not got a massive differential of speed that I need to come out with. More just like, you know, say if someone attacks from the back and I'm going pretty hard, it's gonna take him a good five seconds to even come past me. And the climb's not that long. And then just over the top, I was just holding the wheel and, I, and then I just pushed on down the bot, just over the top and I just lost it. So I rolled in about 15 seconds behind my group. They were going for 27th, I think. The only other noticeable thing is that um, <coughs> the absolute fucking snake, Jan Bakalans, had support crews throughout the whole race and even threw his pack to them about 30k to go. Um, so yeah, you know, snakes never change, I guess. That's why no one likes them. Um, so hopefully he gets to qualify, but even so, I'm counting myself as 30 seconds. And at the line, Glenn was double parked with... What drinks did you have at the line? Um, I had some lemonade. Because Kansas doesn't like drinking and driving. Mm. And I didn't even know where that cocktail thing was. It looked like the thing I had on Thursday night. That's why I picked it. Yeah. So I thought, like, just gonna love this. Like, bottle of water, a little bit of cocktail. But when you came over the line, there wasn't much on your mind apart from your, your leg. There was, like, and drinking water. I was spewing out blood by that point. Yeah. <laughs> so. so I threw away my socks and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think. We used that uh, probably about 
20 bottles of water so kind of have my famous my famous uh, wipe down the famous Yates wipe down um, but yeah I think after doing when was the last time we were out I don't know I got drunk before tracker didn't I and then we went, to, went out with the SRAM guys on Thursday and I had a couple of tequilas and stuff so Glenn thinks I'm an alcoholic so we had alcoholic beverages for me at the line <laughs> that's the last thing I want to see right now I did have cold cold normal drinks ready as well yeah <laughs> so Glenn was doing three men's three man's job really um Meccano swan dog and kind of like acting DS while I raced yeah so <laughs> Uh, Swan Dog, second DS, mm. and trying to keep up with the, the mechanics job. So overall, I reckon it's a pretty successful trick, really, coming away with 20, 30 seconds in a you know absolutely crazy stacked field. 30 seconds. Yeah. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Um, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty successful trip, and we're going to be back next year.